Hey, what's up guys? Mario back again with another trade video. Uh, today I'm going to go over two trades. I did trade AMD stock. I also did trade Roku stock and I was actually short bias. And I, the reason why was because yesterday the market took a big dump. It had a pretty big sell off. The VIX, the, 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 uh, the fear index was over a 5%. And, and to me, it looked like that move was going to continue. Uh, the VIX was going to continue to trend and the market was going to continue to pull back. Now the market, both either the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 been trending on a daily, multiple days in a row. And I guess yesterday was a day for a little relief pullback. Uh, so, I, uh, so the reason why I was short buys on Roku and AMD was because I wanted to continue that, that uh, pullback. Uh, so I was looking for a second day uh, continuation move on the short side. Now it didn't quite go as well as planned. I did follow my process. I did take two losses on that. Um, but I'm gonna show you my thought process and, and why the reason why I took those trades. And hopefully you can learn a little bit more about these strategies and also about risk management. Because uh, even though I did take two losses, I was able to cover uh, and, and not take more a bigger loss than, than I should have because I managed my losses based on my risk management. So uh, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel if you learned something from this video. Uh, feel free to uh, you know ask any questions down below. Let me share my screen and let's get started. All right. Okay. So um, AMD. So let's let's take a first look of uh, AMD and, and actually the market yesterday, just because I think it's important to show the market and, and what happened yesterday. So if you guys can see, the market has been uh, trending pretty nicely. You know, several days in a row has had a pretty nice trend. Has never actually uh, it closed below the the, uh, the nine um, EMA on the daily chart. So that was pretty a big deal because it hasn't done that in several days. So that's something that I took notice. Uh, you know, also the the VIX. If you see the VIX, it was up over seven percent. First significant bounce we've had in the VIX in like whew, like over a month uh, since the elections actually. So to me that was significant. And also the NASDAQ. NASDAQ actually had even a bigger pullback um, in the, on, under huge volume and it closed below the nine uh, EMA, the nine uh, moving average, exponential moving average, which again to me is a big deal. So today what I was looking for, um, I was looking for a continuation, a second day continuation, low hanging fruit short on, on, on that move. And the two stocks that I was looking at was actually uh, Roku and AMD. Uh, so AMD, of course, uh, being that's part of the uh, S&P 500 as well as a NASDAQ uh, under the semiconductor sector. And if you look at the SMH was a semiconductor ETF, you know, it had a pretty nice sell off too. So I was looking for a second day move. So that's the reason why I decided to short AMD. So going over AMD, um, again, uh, we had a pretty huge sell off yesterday and I wanted to short uh, based on these levels, the uh, midpoint. And I was even looking at 92, um, even uh, 90, 93.30 to kind of, you know, start adding in those shorts. Uh, I do use a lot of range guys and my, you know, it gives me a lot of flexibility. Uh, and, and I do it like that. And I do attempt to add a confirmation. That's what I usually tend to do. So it had a really nice, strong open. Um, it could act, actually something that we talked about in, in our uh, morning uh, Zoom call with my team, my teammates. Uh, we actually, actually just, we talked about even going long on a uh, red or green type of move here. Uh, but usually I don't do those trades. I more of, I kind of try to keep my, my process very systematic. And my thought, my process was like, okay, yeah, that could happen. It could be a red or green move, but at the end of the day, I want to short because I, I believe overall bigger picture, we're going to get another pullback. Uh, so my first entry was here at the midpoint around 91, to, yeah, 91.20s. Um, and I was also looking at 92. It didn't quite get the 92. It actually got really, really close to 92. Um, but unfortunately it, it didn't, uh, touch it. So I didn't get in. So I kind of wanted to kind of wait for a, a breakdown of the trend. And so I could short on, on, on a, any, uh, pullback to that. Uh, so I did, uh, ended up shorting actually, give me one second. Let me, yeah, uh, fix this really quick. So I did ended up shorting again, 
once it kind of broke uh, below this 940 uh, uh, level. Because you know, you see the first bounce here, it broke below that. So I added a short here and I wanted a short here. So my plan was it, it was gonna hold this 940 and continue the downtrend. Now it didn't do that. It reclaimed that 9140 and I stopped out and I was pretty much done with that. I was like, okay, stopped out, met a good level based on my risk management. It doesn't look like it's gonna do it. It doesn't look like it's gonna happen. I am pretty much done with that trade. Now, I did end up going back to it. Um, and the reason why was because of the VIX. Uh, again, the VIX is, is one of the most uh, actually important uh, indicators to kind of look at if, if you are, I guess you could say, uh, trading like uh, high beta or large cap stocks like uh, Facebook, Amazon, AMD, and, and those type of stocks, NVIDIA. Uh, and what I noticed that uh, AMD pretty much was testing this 22 level, you know, a support level, and it reclaimed it. I felt like, you know what? I think we, we, we're going to get a sell off. You know, I think that there's going to be a pullback coming soon. Um, you know, if the VIX continues to trend, I think we're going to get a pullback in the market. Also, at the same, same time, uh, the NASDAQ was actually tested as, uh, it tested as midpoint. So I was feeling like, you know what, I think we're going to get a pullback. We're going to get a pullback to, to uh, the uh, volume with the average price. And I think that's an opportunity for me to get short um, and, and reverse that trade. So um, I did end up shorting again on AMD. And I decided to short on this uh, break of the 9140 uh, because I felt like this, it was going to break this trend. And that was to me uh, my indicator to kind of get in short. So if you guys could see this trend, and again, that's also the, the level that I that uh, that I was looking at earlier. You know, that to me I thought it was going to be a big support level. So breaking this down trend and also uh, breaking below this 91.40, I felt like it was going to make a move. Now it did break below the 91.40, but it didn't quite well react how I wanted to. It started the downtrend and it bounced off the midpoint. And it literally squeezed and it squeezed me out and I was out, I was stopped out. And after that, I was like, you know what? I am done. AMD is not doing what I wanted to do, is not doing what I expected, is not trending with the market, uh, you know, how I wanted to, and especially when you see uh, the NASDAQ literally just selling off. Um, and I was done with it. I called it a day. Uh, later on, it kind of pulled back and it made a move to the volume, uh, the VWAP, the volume made average price, my original uh, thought process, my original plan. Uh, so it just goes, it goes to show you guys that, you know, day trading is not easy, you know. Um, everything can look perfect, and for whatever reason, you get a little squeeze like this, and you get stopped out, and you're done, you know. So hopefully you guys learned something from this, this video. And again, at this point, I didn't want to get back in. I would have been chasing. Uh, again, I already took uh, two losses. I, I don't want to make that a third. So, uh, you know, I was done with it, you know, and it was all based my, around my, uh, my risk management. So I was okay with that loss. Now, um, that was pretty much it with AMD Roku. Uh, Roku actually yesterday had a really nice sell off, um, you know, pulled back with the market. Uh, it is also extended on the Bulger Vans and has been having uh, multiple days in a row in terms of a uh, trend. And Yesterday had a pretty nice uh, sell-off, and, and they had a, a, a what we call an inverted uh, inverted hammer, uh, which is a very bearish uh, type of uh, a, a candle on a daily chart. And again, similar to AMD, I was looking for a second continuation uh, on the sell-off. Now, um, similar to AMD, uh, Roku decided to do his own thing as well. You know, uh, it didn't it, it, it didn't do quite well what I wanted. I did end up shorting here at the midpoint again, uh, the the area where I like to usually get short. Um, I decided to add here it is another level 316, and, uh, another important intraday level on the daily chart, uh, an intraday chart, excuse me. And I wanted to see the reverse, the reversal for a pullback to the the uh, the, the VWAP. Now. It, it kind of broke down at this very important level, which is 3315, uh, but it kind of like reversed. Um, and when I noticed that it, that, it, that, uh, that, it, that it reclaimed the 316 level, I was out. I was out. I'm like, dude, I'm done with this. You know, this should have worked. If it was going to work, it was going to work after this, this break of 315. It should have, you know, gone straight to the, the, the web. 
Uh, now, eventually, again, it pulled back to it, uh, but it wasn't after it took this, this squeeze and took me out. So, again, day trading is not easy. Sometimes you get moves like these, they're not smooth, um, and you can get shot. You know, you could get, you could take a little paper cuts here, and those paper cuts get at. Uh, so, my, my process is if it doesn't work by the second turn time, I am out. Now, I go for the third time because. You know, usually by the second time, if it doesn't work, you know, you're, you're done. Now, I didn't trade it anymore because um, I was focused on, on AMD and I felt like, look, it looks like AMD and Roku are both trading very similar with the market or both trading very similar. So if AMD doesn't work, that means that most of Roku is not going to work. So that's the reason why I did not decide to short on Roku again. And um, now Roku, of course, did have a, a more smoother sell off compared to AMD, but hey, that goes to show you, you know, like day trading is not easy, guys. Day trading is absolutely not easy because, you know, after it broke uh, the 316 level again, boom, nice little sell-off, you know, to, to the uh, volume weighted average price. So that's pretty much it, guys. You know, um, again, guys, um, you know, you win some, you lose some. Uh, overall, you gotta, you know, follow your process. You know, statistically, uh, I am a 70% uh, uh, winning trader. So out of 10 trades, I do tend to win seven of them. Uh, now, today was a losing day. And that's what it is, you know. Uh, again, when it, when, it, when it comes to losing, it's, you got to make sure it's based on your risk management. You got to protect, make sure those, those losses are small and then your wins are big. And that's how you win overall long term. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys learned something from this video. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. Uh, you guys will hear from me soon. Take care.